Uh, thank you, Eve, for the introduction. Um, so I'm based at Georgia Tech Loran, and I'm heavily involved in uh, the CreateX program. Just to make it very clear exactly what it is, it's a, it's a sequence of courses that are available for undergraduate students. So the, the i -Corps program is meant to take uh, inventions that are, uh, or discoveries that have been made by, uh, by scientists or uh, faculty or PhD students and prepare them for commercialization, it was, whereas CreateX is meant for undergraduate students. Uh, one of the crucial words mentioned in this uh, in this presentation is that the, the CreateX is meant to instill confidence in the students. And where does that confidence come from? Well, it doesn't come from the faculty because uh, we're not supposed to judge their projects. Uh, one of the most famous successes in the world is FedEx, uh, whose founder got a D on his project when he proposed the idea of FedEx. So, so the philosophy is that the students get out of the building, they leave Georgia Tech, or in our case, they leave Georgia Tech Lorraine, and they go out and talk to people about their ideas and their projects. And they learn how to adjust the idea according to the needs of the market and the needs of, and desires of their, uh, of their customers. So the first step I in CreateX is to uh, get out and talk to people, and the rest, of the, the rest of the sequence is meant to get them ready to, to launch that idea. Uh, CreateX has a very, very ambitious vision uh, there are three parts to this vision. The first is to be recognized as the number one startup campus in the country, both in terms of number of startups, in terms of rankings, startup successes, number of founders. Uh, there's a goal to in eventually engage all of the undergrads at Georgia Tech, so 100% of every class would be engaged in CreateX. And, uh, and another goal is to have more than 300 student startups uh, per year. And uh, we're assuming that they're going to complete their education at Georgia Tech before they, before they do the startup. <laughs> so there's three components. The, the first component is called, uh, uh, is called is learn. And the idea, uh, the idea during this startup lab is that they leave the building and they spent the whole semester doing essentially customer discovery. Um, we had an interesting guest lecture uh, this last uh, last Thursday with with Oscar, who had visited us, and uh, he asked them the difference between um, capex and opex, and they, he got blank stares because we get there, 
after they've already proven their idea after having um, 150, 200 interviews with, with uh, potential customers. So they're only concerned with what the customer needs and they'll learn the other parts uh, later. Um, the second part is, uh, is make. So uh, if, if, uh, if the customer discovery shows that they can really launch a company, that there is a market for their idea, they've been able to find an idea that could satisfy this need, then they spend another semester working with Georgia Tech faculty where they build the prototype, they build what they need so that they can, uh, so they can demonstrate uh, that the solution works in real life. And the third step is launch, where the students receive about $25,000 worth of uh, funding to be able to uh, get the expert advice they need to structure their company and prepare for a successful launch. So currently, uh, the CreateX program is leading to about 50 startups per year. And the goal uh, five years from now would be uh, 100 startups, and by 2028, 300 startups. The total number of students involved in the project right now uh, is 1,650 students per year, uh, taught by 40 faculty. The goal is to get up to uh, 6,000 by 2028. So the, an update of these goals for 2019. The target goal for uh, student involvement for, for fiscal year 19 has been met. There is, has been a 15% increase in the number of startups launched in 2019. The total value of the uh, valuation of the CreateX alumni startups is currently $302 million. And the audience for the Demo Day 2019 is more than 1,500 people came to the Demo Day. Uh, you can see that, uh, requ that reaching these metrics will um, uh, has, has we've seen a lot of rapid growth. They're currently, uh, so far we've had 35 different majors uh, sign up for CreateX uh, classes, and these students come from all six colleges. Here at Georgia Tech Lorraine, we have a unique offering. Uh, with the support of Anna Stenport, we've added a new section, which is called French Startup Lab. And in this program, students who are French minors or French majors can take the startup lab class at GTL and earn French credit for that because when they do their customer discovery, they're out, out in the world speaking to uh, French citizens uh, most of the time. And they will also be uh, conducting those interviews in French, doing their presentations about their startup in French and, uh, and uh, creating their minimum viable product in French as well as English. Uh, even without this this startup, in the last last semester when the course was taught, all of the students made a French minimum viable product as well as an English-based one, and they were able to look at the the differences in um, in click-through rates and interest in their products uh, by na by nationality of the people responding. Uh, the valuation exercise is based on revenue numbers from these startups. It shows a $302 million aggregate valuation. The first uh, startup exit occurred in 2017, which was in uh, music technology. So this is a, an introduction to CreateX. We have a vision to send our students uh, at GTL across Europe, talking to different people. Uh, one, of the, one of the startup ideas that uh, people were working on this last semester they came to their final presentation. They said, we completed our last interviews yesterday in Finland and got feedback from people about our, our music-related idea there. And so uh, students are really, uh, really having an expanding experience and getting out and discovering the ways that international markets can be different and the way that uh, they, they learn a lot about the structure of, uh, structure of French and European markets, the different regulatory environments they're in the different, uh, uh, different ways in which uh, public and private aspects of ideas get funded and, uh, and created. So it's a, it's a mind-expanding student's experience for our students. Uh, thank you.
experience from we from Europe looking on startups, it's about Silicon Valley, West Coast, West Coast, and West Coast from our perspective. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you manage to be successful with this kind of thing, with this competitive situation? You want to say something or we can talk about it? Well, from, from my perspective, uh, the, 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 the class is not Silicon Valley oriented. So, so the students, uh, their ideas might not be related to silicon related things. So they could be CS related, they could be anything. One, uh, one group of students that's had a successful launch, they're selling insects that they grow. Let me, say, let me say something also. So CreateX is unique, actually, you know, because both of the scale and so on. So, so we're not trying to duplicate what Stanford does. And this is for the students also. So they start from the beginning. You know, many, many of undergraduates, first year, as I mentioned, you know, one, one of the reasons why my kids, uh, you know, decided to go there is, is also uh, because of that. So we're attracting people who have the passion. What we're doing with them is to try to help them put some little bit of structure. Most importantly, Georgia Tech does not take any IP in the undergraduate. So these are all companies that the students, they keep the IP. We're launching about, I think it's more than 50 this year, but you know, and, and we have, we had support from, you know, you saw during the video, you saw a gentleman in there, his name is Chris Klaus, who put in serious money in it. And so, so we, have, we have the ecosystem, we have the training, we have experience of about, I don't know now, a few years, five, six, seven years. So we're not trying to duplicate Silicon Valley. We're really trying to do something that is both for the students who can be entrepreneurs either at a large company or they can start their own. And I, and I think we're, we're succeeding. You, have a, you want to add the Magnus? Yeah, I may, may add a little bit. Magnus, the, the chair stuff. So I'm the, the school chair in electrical and computer engineering. And I've spent quite a bit of time going out to Silicon Valley. And my explicit ambition is to make people look east, right? And when they do look east, don't look too far up north towards Boston, but down to Atlanta. And over the last decade, the, the venture capital scene in Atlanta has really changed. There is lots of investments, there's lots of VCs, and what's interesting is Silicon Valley market, VC market is saturated. So they're looking at, let's say, bargain entrepreneurial hubs. So Austin has become one. Atlanta has become one, Ann Arbor is, is emerging as a, as a strong one. So, so it has really changed over the last decade in terms of where companies are started. But yeah, we're, we're not Stanford, but we're also not the University of Oklahoma. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, I didn't mean to insult anyone. I <laughs> Anna? <laughs> that's, by the way, that's on tape. Yeah. <laughs> In video. <laughs> well, I'll say something along those lines. Ah, thank you. Good orthogonal. Um, one of the things I, I would say, I'm looking at it a little bit differently. When you look at like Silicon Valley, the way that it reached the, the pinnacle where it is, is because of the early investments that were made in a culture that was developed. And so if you look at what we're doing at Georgia Tech, we're creating a culture around innovation and startups. But we'll be able to create something similar uh, as long as we invest and have the right thing. And so I'll talk a little bit more in the, in the next session when we talk about entrepreneurship, about the things that we have done on campus with our invention studios. Both Magnus and I have one where students, they lead these efforts. We give them the tools, we get out of the way, and it's amazing things that come out of that. And so even though you have other universities that start these in invention studios, they don't build the same culture. And so that's, that's the unique thing about how Silicon Valley got started. And so we're doing something, we're focusing on the culture and giving students and giving people the right tools, and people are now taking notice and coming. Hi, everybody. I'll add to that. I'm Anna Stemford, the chair of the School of Modern Languages. So when it comes to the innovation and entrepreneurship uh, environment in Atlanta, I also just want to add a couple of perspectives, meaning that um, Atlanta is a truly international uh, location. It's also uh, a city, and Georgia Tech is a campus that values inclusivity and diversity of opinion. So s when I talk to some of the um, startup leaders in, in Atlanta, what they say is also, Yes, Silicon Valley has an amazing infrastructure, 
But perhaps there are things in the Silicon Valley ecosystem that didn't work out exactly great when it comes to inclusivity, diversity, um, representation of diverse viewpoints and approaches and so forth. But that's really where Atlanta also has a great advantage and benefit, building on the city's rich history, building on the commitment of the educational institutions, including Georgia Tech, to really focus on that and leverage that as an asset. And that includes anything from global and cross-cultural competence to um, ethnic, racial, gendered, um, LGBTQI diversity. And Atlanta can really shine, and Georgia Tech can really shine in that space as well when it comes to building inclusive, diverse, uh, entrepreneurial uh, entities. Thank you.